Hello, everyone. I'm Gigi Godwin, President and CEO of the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to today's virtual business accelerator on how to do business with Marriott, presented by Casey Oaks, Director of Supplier Diversity for Marriott International. Joining him today from their partner organization, Aramark, are Mercedes Rodriguez, Manager for Supplier Diversity, and Natalie Santos, their VP responsible for sourcing. Welcome. And now to our guests. Thank you for joining us today. We bring you today's accelerator so that you can come away from this presentation knowing how to do business with Marriott International. Specific strategies to be presented today include how Marriott partners with the with Aramark and the Avendra Group to manage its supply chain, and how diverse suppliers can pursue business opportunities through Avendra to support Marriott International. The slides and audio from today's webinar will be sent to you via email after today's presentation. Before we begin, we want to remind you of upcoming events and opportunities that we built just for our members. And with that, I'd like to introduce our manager of events and membership, Megan Foy. Megan? Oh, I don't know if you can see me. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Megan Foy, manager of events and membership here at the Chamber. Um, we have some exciting events coming up. Our annual dinner will take place on June 9th at the North Bethesda Marriott. Um, so it'll be a night of networking and honoring our awardees. Um, it will also be our first in-person signature event back in over two years. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, we, we are also having our NOAA Small Business Industry Day on Thursday, June 23rd. Um, this will be a virtual event and you will be able to register on our website next week. So please save the dates for both of those um, exciting upcoming events. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. And now we have a few poll questions just to know who's with us today. And uh, so uh, are we ready, Alexis, for our poll questions? So that this will give our friends from uh, our speakers today an idea of who's with us as well. So you can see the first question is, where is your business located? Montgomery County, Metro Maryland, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., or other? Okay. And our next question is, do you have locations outside of Maryland? Montgomery County, Metro Maryland, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. So oh, I guess we can go with a simple yes or no on that one. And we have another question after that. In um, all right, do you have locations? And then I think we want to go to our industry question. In which industry is your company? Construction, nonprofit association, professional services, healthcare, other. And then finally, uh, actually, okay, in which industry is your company? We have that. And then we want to go to your current number of full-time employees, I think, is our next question. We'll put up on the screen so you can see that. 1 to 50, 51 to 100, 101 to 250, 251 to 500, or over 500. Ah, and you can see our poll results uh, for our size uh, falls, let's see, you can see roughly 75% of you are under 50. So definitely um, majority of our participants today are in that size category. Thank you. 
All right. Thanks so much for participating in that. And now it is truly a pleasure to introduce Casey Oaks. Casey serves as Marriott International's Director of Supplier Diversity, where he is a leader in the company's efforts to promote a business world as diverse and vibrant as the communities he serves. In his role, Casey oversees Marriott International's commitment to help grow their annual spend to a target of one billion annually with businesses owned by minorities, women, the LGBT community, veterans, and people with disabilities. Previously, Casey served the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce as Vice President of Corporate Relations, acting as the organization's principal liaison to corporate America. Casey also has experience as a former Capitol Hill staffer for the U.S. Senator Frank R. Lautenberg, uh, bringing experience of small business, LGBT issues, immigration reform, and transportation policy to his portfolio. Last, but certainly not least, Casey also serves on the boards of the Women's Business Enterprise National Council and Women's Business Enterprise Councils of New York and DC metro area. As you can see, you are in very good hands today. So with that, I will now turn over today's accelerator program to Casey. Thank you so much, and thank you for having us. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Casey Oaks. I am Director of Global Supplier Diversity for Marriott International. I am so excited to have Mercedes and Natalie with me today um, to talk a little bit about how to do business with Marriott. And as you'll learn as we go through our slides, depending on what you're selling and where you're selling to, um, your path into becoming a supplier to Marriott can vary. Uh, and so we're going to dive into some slides. Um, and what we'll do is please feel free to put questions in the chat or in the uh, question box. After we've gotten through all of our slides, uh, we're going to divide and conquer the questions um, at the end. So please do be putting them in as we go. Um, but really excited to have our, our partners here with us. Uh, we actually just wrapped a 90 minute meeting with Marriott executives together talking about how we can collaborate and move the needle forward um, to create new opportunities in our supply chain for diverse suppliers and uh, suppliers throughout the region. So I'm going to uh, navigate to share my screen. Just give me one moment. Um, and if our um, moderator can help me because the screen share button is not allowed, I think because the poll is open perhaps. Um, I'll talk just briefly. Oh, here we go. Show my screen. Just was offered that opportunity. And Natalie or Mercedes, if one of you would uh, be able just to confirm that we can see this audience can see stream. all right fantastic so um we've used the word supplier diversity a few times already on the conversation i like to think of or i recognize that supplier diversity in in my mind is uh, one of corporate america's best kept secrets um essentially the way to think about supplier diversity and, and my role at marriott is that uh, any large-scale corporate procurement organization um, is going to have two primary biases in their supply chain, and those are towards incumbency and scale. We like to do business with the folks we've always done business with, and we like to, to go with the biggest players because sometimes we presume it's easier, that they must be the best because they're the largest. Um, and sometimes those things are true, and sometimes there's valid business reasons for all of those things. Um, but those two biases disproportionately impact historically underutilized uh, businesses from the communities that you mentioned, minorities, women, LGBT people, people with disabilities, and U.S. military veterans. And so our program uh, works to act as a counterbalance to those biases, uh, creating opportunities, uh, access, mentorship, and guidance to compete and hopefully win for uh, win Marriott's business. Our program is branded exchanges by Marriott, uh, and that's because this is not a, a giveaway. It's not a set aside. It really is uh, an exchange of, of value. Um, we, we need our suppliers to be the best, most innovative, hopefully low cost uh, suppliers possible. Um, and so we wanted to center our program and our initiative around that concept of an exchange rather than uh, a charitable effort. There's a very important business reasons to do this work. Uh, and I'll be talking a lot about diverse suppliers today, and um, but the lessons and the principles that we'll be talking about here 
um, are applicable regardless of whether your business meets that threshold of 51% owned by someone from these communities. The pathways are, are largely the same um, regardless of whether you're diverse or um, majority owned. So to start off, um, for those who might not be familiar with this graphic, Marriott International uh, is the world's largest hotel company. Um, it's not our ambition. Our goal was to be the world's favorite travel company. Um, but I wanted to start off with the breadth of, of what Marriott is today. We have over 8,000 hotels around the world in over 143 um, countries and markets. Um, we operate 30 distinct brands. Uh, and what you can see on, on the screen here is our brand matrix. So what I, I like to start um, the conversation with is uh, people think of Marriott International and they, they think of this big thing, but what we actually are is, is a number of different types of businesses. Um, and if you're looking to become a supplier to Marriott, start to think about you know which one of these brands um, most aligns with uh, your experience, your company's culture, um, your, your products and services. Um, it's very rare that a supplier is the right type of supplier for all 30 of our brands. Um, perhaps you're a, a food service provider that would be great for select service brands because you've got the scale and the uh, distribution to uh, service courtyards throughout the country. Or perhaps you're a food service company that has um, super high quality curated, but maybe regionalized um, products that would be great for Ritz Carlton or St. Regis. And so we operate 30 different brands. The matrix here has three tiers. There's the luxury, uh, premium or full service brands, and then the select. And then there's also a, a division down the middle, classic, which is your traditional Marriott, your Sheridans, versus distinctive, which are, are brands with maybe a little bit more personality or edge to them, um, a little bit more curated, if you will. So um, as, a, as we mentioned before, the program covers businesses owned by minorities, which in the United States is uh, inclusive of Black, Hispanic, Native American, and Asian American owned businesses, uh, women owned businesses, uh, LGBT owned businesses, dis people with disabilities, and veteran. Uh, and we do this because a diverse supply chain or supply chain rich with diverse suppliers is typically more stable, more innovative, and more cost effective. Um, if you allow those biases of incumbency and scale to take over, you're going to just end up uh, auto renewing contracts, paying more, um, not looking at the, the latest and greatest coming down the pipe. Uh, and so uh, it's really important to, to make sure when you're a company of our size that you're, you're bringing new players to the table often. Um, we've done a lot of work over the past 20 years. We were actually the first company in hospitality to establish one of these programs back in 1997. Um, we hit a company high of $995 million spent in 2019 with diverse home companies. And obviously the impacts of the uh, pandemic have had a, a significant impact on uh, our business. It's also had a significant impact on the diverse supplier ecosystem. Um, and so collectively, Natalie, Mercedes and I are all working together to, to rebuild back to those heights. Um, we've spent over 5 billion with diverse home companies over the past 10 years, which is an incredible impact. So uh, what qualifies as, uh, or how do you qualify to become a diversifier or supplier to Marriott? These are general standards. Um, they are very category, or they can be category specific and there are typically, um, you know, uh, caveats that can, can be had, but typically these are the, the things that you should have in place to become a diversifier or a supplier to Marriott in general. So skipping over the first one, which is the, the diversity threshold, 51% to qualify as diverse um, for our program. Typically, we look to see that a business has been uh, established for at least three years um, and that they're able to meet our insurance requirements, and those will vary by category. Um, it's, there are limited cases where if your business is newer but you have uh, executives who have a lot of hospitality experience or you've just spun off from a different thing um, we might consider but generally speaking if you're in the first few years of your business uh, you want to be focused on getting the fundamentals in place um, and preparing yourself for a client of our of our size um, because we we typically don't want to step in that early in a business just because it's riskier there are things going on and so typically around three years we buy a lot of different things, food and beverage, disposables, furniture and fixtures, hotel monies, et cetera. Um, I would say one distinction I'd make about um, Marriott International as a company is that we operate hotels, we brand hotels. Um, 
but we actually don't own any hotels. And so construction of um, hotels is typically done by um, an investor or a developer. Um, and they'll sign a contract with us on the management of uh, the hotel or a franchise agreement. But that actually spend and uh, those types of things are actually done by a different entity. Um, there are a few large ones in our area, Host Hotels, I think is the, the largest one that uh, you know you might be familiar with. Um, but if you're a construction business looking to help us build a hotel, um, Marriott International actually would not be um, your point of entry for those types of opportunities. Um, think of us more as the, the servicer or the operator of the hotel. The other thing I would mention is that we are also um, a uh, franchising company. So we uh, manage, which means Mary International Associates will go in and operate the hotel um, to make purchasing decisions, et cetera, for about 30% of our portfolio. The other about 70% are pure franchisees. Now we have brand standards that they have to adhere to. There are certain clearly certain products and services that they need to have in the hotel, depending on what brand they're operating. Um, but we are not always making the purchasing decisions for those hotels. Um, a vendor services a lot of those, Aramark Avenger. And so um, if you enter in via that path that we'll talk about a little bit later, there is an opportunity to compete for, for those opportunities as well. But what we're, we're talking about as far as kind of Marriott International, it's the operation of the hotel. Um, and it's the operation of the, the managed hotels within our portfolio that we have the most direct influence over. Um, there were a lot of professional services companies in our poll earlier. We do a lot of that as well. We obviously uh, hire a lot of consultants at Marriott HQ uh, to help us do this work. Um, but we, uh, you, you may not recognize that a lot of our hotels leverage uh, contingent labor um, to uh, handle the fluctuating amounts of banquet uh, staff that might be needed or, or housekeepers, things of that nature. Um, a lot of our laundry is outsourced. There's a booming business in the laundry. So if you've got some extra dollars laying around, it might be in your best interest to, to open up a commercial laundry service because we, we do quite a bit of that. Um, and then the uh, other thing I would mention is uh, the energy we'd be, uh, obviously uh, are looking to green our portfolio, we've made a number of commitments in that vein. Um, and so there are certain areas where energy and utilities are regulated, um, but we are looking for solutions in that space. And so um, the, we are kind of looking at, at new opportunities to, to find more renewable energy sources for our properties. And that's something that we're actively looking at. Uh, how do you get in front of a Marriott associate to, to be considered the, the easiest path or the, the most evergreen path? Um, is to register in our supplier portal, which is on the screen. And when I get a break to stop talking, I'll also make sure I drop that link in the chat. Um, but this is a, a tool that uh, every above property, so you know, headquarter based or regionally based uh, married associate, not necessarily the one specifically working in an individual property, but to have access to, um, to, to evaluate suppliers for a competitive opportunity. So the ones who use it most frequently are our formal procurement staff for conducting RFPs, requests for proposals, or competitive spend events, as I like to, to call it. Um, they're the ones who use it most often. So they'll go in and they'll search for uh, translation services because they're, they're deploying a new training and they want to make sure that they've got uh, it translated to all the markets that we need. Uh, and in that portal, uh, they'll see uh, suppliers who've gone in and registered their interest in doing business with Marriott, created a profile, put in the the services and capabilities that they have, uh, and also if they're a diverse supplier, any diverse certifications that they have. Uh, the portal is not limited to diverse suppliers, um, so I'd encourage all of you to take the time to register in here. Um, and one of the exciting things about the tool is that um, we're not the only one who uses the engine behind it, so it's powered by a diverse owned company called Supplier IO. Um, they uh, have a number of large corporate clients, and so if you register in this portal, even if you come in through our front door, um, uh, of the Marriott link, uh, your profile, if you opt into it, can be visible to their other corporate clients as well. And so if you have a product or service that could potentially be utilized by, uh, off the top of my head, like McDonald's or JP Morgan Chase or American Airlines, uh, other Fortune 500 companies, there's the potential for it to be seen there as well. Um, so Marriott does use our supplier portal. We also use peer referrals. Uh, we use external databases. And so um, if you're registered in 
the federal government system for word management, if you've been certified by the National Minority Supplier Development Council, um, or my old employer, the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce, uh, we use those databases, um, as well as, you know, internal referrals uh, to evaluate our own opportunities that we're managing at the corporate headquarters. Um, my team uh, specifically activates to try and include a diverse supplier in every competitive spend event the company does. We don't always hit that mark, but it is policy to endeavor to do that. Um, and so we, we work to try and find a qualified supplier to compete for those opportunities. Um, if there's not an opportunity to work with us, um, some franchisees do have latitude or fran many franchisees have latitude to make purchasing decisions on uh, certain procurement areas or purchasing areas for their uh, company that aren't a part of brand standards or um, you know our, our audits that we're doing. And so there may be an opportunity to uh, identify a few franchises in your uh, backyard or that you've got a business or a relationship with to um, start to, to gather some hospitality experience and, and work in our portfolio until an opportunity is right. Um, and then I would say most of our on-property purchasing categories are managed by Adventure. So that's Natalie and Mercedes. Um, they are uh, now owned by Aramark. Um, but most of the on-property procurement opportunities are managed by Avendra, and they take the lead on those processes, that request for proposal, that contracting effort, um, and vendor selection in partnership with us, but they're really the leaders on it, and so they have their own processes that they'll talk about. Most of the, let's say, corporate functions um, happen with me and my team at, at Mary HQ, so through our portal. And so I just want to make that distinction. It, neither of these things happen in a vacuum, but if you're looking to sell specifically to a property in a more holistic fashion, um, kind of contracted and in a formal supplier, the path in um, it is going to be via a vendor, but you'll want to make sure that you're building relationships and getting um, visibility within the Marriott portal and with Marriott Associates as well. Um, I do also want to mention that. Um, Marriott has made a number of commitments in the sustainability space under our Serve 360 platform. Um, and so it's very important to do your research on company trends and commitments. Um, and so if you're looking to become a supplier to Marriott, knowing what our goals are in that space and how you can be of service to them, um, whether it be on climate, water usage, um, disposables, obviously there's been a a big, uh, big commitment around eliminating plastic straws from our, our supply chain uh, or from our properties. Uh, understanding how you play a role in our broader sustainability commitment um, is going to be really helpful in helping your business stand out and, and uh, ultimately win our business. So I do want to mention just before I, I turn the call over to the, my friends from Avendra, and then um, once they've gone through their slides, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more specifics and get into the chat. But um, one of the things that I'm most proud of uh, is that we are getting ready uh, to open our new headquarters later this year. Um, it is going to be in downtown Bethesda. Uh, it's been a major, major investment that the company has made um, in this region, um, uh, in the talent here, the community here. Uh, it will be next to a brand new Marriott Hotel as well, but uh, I cannot wait for us to to move in there. And for me and, and my work, one of the most exciting things is that we actually leveraged a diverse owned construction company from the DMV area to do the build out. Um, the survey the Fran Construction is serving as our general contractor. They are a woman owned business. Um, they've been an incredible partner in this work and um, you can see the pictures here. Um, it's going to be a, a hugely port for our, our company once we ultimately move in. Um, and here are just some of the project specifics and how it's impacting the, the region. Um, but ultimately, 3,500 Marriott associates are going to be based out of those headquarters. Uh, will be open up later this year. Uh, and one of the cool things about the um, the hotel that will be attached, I should also mention, is that it will be a, a Marriott branded hotel, but it will actually have um, sample rooms from a number of our different brands it, for us to kind of test out would this work in a West End room or uh, how, how does this kind of play out and we'll be able to kind of use it as a, a focus group or a demo space for potential new owners or investors to come in to, to think about how they'll be remodeling a, a hotel or, or things like that. So um, it'll be officially Marriott branded, but it'll be a unique hotel right in this region uh, that's got kind of almost all of the hotel rooms from all of our different brands on site. So uh, coming soon uh, to a uh, Bethesda metrics out near you. 
But with that, I do want to turn the call over to uh, both Natalie and Mercedes uh, from the Aramark team uh, and Avenger Group. They are our on property procurement partner. Um, so with that, Natalie and Mercedes, why don't you go through your slides and then we can double back to any questions or get into the, the nitty gritty if we need to after. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Casey. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Natalie Santos here, Vice President of Responsible Sourcing for Aramark and uh, Avendra. Uh, so the, the title of Responsible Sourcing, for those of you that are not um, aware, it's a business strategy that incorporates ethical, environmental, and social factors into the supply chain and procurement process. Um, so if we can flip to the next slide. And the following slide is fine. Thank you. Um, so specific to the Marriott relationship, uh, Aramark um, acquired Avendra a few years ago. Avendra is our procurement arm and strategic partner with Marriott. Um, Avendra is a industry hospitality procurement leader uh, with um, global scope across North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. Uh, we service over 8,500 properties. Uh, with an aggregate spend of over $14 billion. Um, so right here, you'll see uh, some of the more priority categories that we service and support Marriott around. Uh, so from food and beverage, room operations, engineering, administrative, cleaning, spa, um, golf operations, grounds, gift shop, retail, and alcoholic beverages. Uh, so earlier, it did look like the majority of the participants today are in professional services. Um, a lot of these categories are more driven around products and supplies, um, but there's still opportunities uh, within professional services. Um, they may be more driven um, around our headquarter locations. So for, for Aramark opportunities, we're based in Philadelphia. The Avendra uh, offices are in Rockville, Maryland, and then obviously Marriott are in the Maryland area as well. Um, so again, a, a lot of purchasing opportunities across various categories. Um, and we look forward to getting more information around your businesses um, as follow up and uh, happy to identify where there may be some um, immediate or future opportunities for consideration. Um, in addition to procurement, um, Avendra also supports Marriott um, on strategic initiatives related to account management, field support and customer relationships, uh, customer service, um, our diversity program, which we'll touch on um, throughout the course of this um, this presentation, as well as our sustainability uh, program. Next slide. So we thought it would be helpful uh, to provide kind of a high level overview of our sourcing process. So how do we um, source, identify um, suppliers to incorporate into our various uh, businesses and locations um, and support our clients within these efforts. Um, so again, a, a summary, a five step process. The first thing we have to do is identify the need. So we work with our clients like Marriott to identify what the business need is for supplier solutions, uh, what procurement categories um, are identified as opportunities to either scale up an existing supplier or identify a new supplier. So um, that in involves target spend categories, so analyze what exactly that may look like from uh, a spend opportunity perspective. Um, thoroughly review the actual contract with the client. So there are a lot of nuances to that from, um, if we talk about supplier diversity, there may be specifics around what diversity categories and percentages of spend the client wants us to source against. Um, there could be local requirements. So a client may want us to source within uh, 50 miles of the operation, 150, 250 miles are usual targets for local procurement. So they want us to work with uh, a local supplier or there may be you know, sustainable sourcing related initiatives. So they want us to, to source and work with a supplier that um, has FSC certified um, uh, paper products or recycling components. So again, a variety of um, factors um, that we have to consider when before going into the sourcing process. Um, and also there can be requirements around specific certifications that a client wants to ensure that um, we source appropriately for suppliers. So once the identification process is complete, then we move over to the sourcing process. 
Um, so with that, um, based on the identification requirements, we review the market. So what suppliers are available in the market, either existing or new suppliers that meet the identification requirements. We review various registration portals, both internally that we, that we manage, but also externally. Um, so working closely with local chambers of commerce, uh, like the one we're speaking to and participating on the call today. Um, we also work with various certification organizations to help us source for suppliers. And um, if needed, we you know, release a um, supplier notification or RFP um, as needed. Uh, so once we do the sourcing, we narrow down um, you know, a select few of applicable suppliers to consider. Then we go into the qualification phase. So once we have um, a narrow list of suppliers, we do some th more thorough vetting to uh, qualify, you know, is this the right product fit for the location, for the client? Again, in this case, Marriott, uh, the supplier have the distribution capacity required. Um, is the pricing competitive? Um, if, if there's supplier diversity requirements, do the certifications align with those requirements? Uh, we also make sure the supplier has um, the appropriate. If, if we can, if we can move back to that slide, the appropriate certification, uh, cent, um, certificate, certificate of insurance, uh, vendor warranties, etc., NDAs that may be needed. Um, and then, uh, last but definitely not least, um, ensure that the supplier meets our quality assurance, auditing, um, and supply chain standards. Um, so, from the qualification stage, if the supplier meets all the requirements. We move forward to the um, award process. Uh, so work with the supplier and the account to set the expectations um, around um, the contract terms, um, secure um, client approval, authorize the vendor, set them up for AP. Um, and uh, at, that per at that point, move forward to the fifth stage, which, which is implementation. So again, working with the supplier to make sure that they're set up appropriately um, and um, are set up most importantly appropriately to be successful uh, with our supply chain standards and also with the client. Uh, so that is kind of a very high level of what the five stages are, but I hope you can see from the stage that um, there is continuous support for the supplier to make sure that they are successful in the process. So again, we'll, we'll be available towards the end to answer any, any questions that may come up from these first two slides, but I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Mercedes on uh, my team uh, to finish the, the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Natalie. Next slide, please. Great. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. Happy to be here with you today. Um, my name is Mercedes Rodriguez, uh, Supplier Diversity uh, Manager for the hospitality side of the business. So in this role, I manage Avenger Supplier Diversity efforts, providing support with supplier engagement, data collection, and analytics reporting relevant to our local and sustainable sourcing procurement initiatives in support of Avenger's customer supplier diversity goals. This, on this slide today, we will talk through the diversity goals, uh, diversity certificates, and also supplier sourcing partners. So our clients, um, our client supplier diversity goals are important to us and Marriott International has certain goals towards certified spend. To support this goal, we invite some of our top self-classified diverse suppliers to work with an Aramark partner um, who is called Certify My Company. They are a diverse owned uh, business specializing in certification process training, consulting and assistance with completing applications. For those um, who apply, I'm sorry, for those who um, apply for third party certification at no cost to the supplier. Aramark, what we do is we, um, we pay the cost of the uh, guidance, the support and completing applications. Um, and the supplier would just have to pay for the certification itself um, at the end of the day. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Additionally, uh, through our partnership with our supplier sourcing partners, we conduct professional development programs to improve the diverse uh, suppliers company performance and provide mentorship and executive coaching opportunities. Uh, next is a diverse source, diverse supplier inclusion. So to ensure diverse suppliers have equitable access to our supply chain, we seek to include a diverse supplier for consideration in competitive initiatives and RFPs. 
Furthermore, our strategic sourcing associates have diversity metrics tied to their performance management goals to ensure diverse Ben remains an important initiative. Diversity certificate. So Aramark and Avenger Group require its diverse owned vendors to submit their certification annually to ensure they continue to qualify as diverse owned business enterprises. To be considered a diverse owned business enterprise, your business must be at least 51% owned, operated and controlled by a diverse individual group of certified individuals. Some of the most common diversity categories, as mentioned previously in Casey's um, slides, are minority business enterprises, women business enterprises, um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender business enterprise, veteran-owned business enterprise, service-disabled, veteran-owned, and disability-owned business enterprises. So understanding that ownership changes can occur within the timeline the company is certified, we request to be notified uh, so that our records may be adjusted accordingly and we can continue to follow uh, those policies and procedures. As it relates to supplier sourcing partners, um, we're listing here uh, some of our national corporate partners. Um, how we partner with them is we attend their conferences, their matchmakers, we have access to their broad base of supplier databases. Uh, so if you're registered with any of these um, national organizations, when it comes time to source for a diverse supplier, as mentioned earlier, we seek the assistance of, of our national partners and um, we search for a particular a particular category and diverse supplier that meets uh, some of those requirements that we're seeking. Next slide, please. Great, thank you. So what you'll see here, uh, we have listed out our sourcing uh, calendar. When you register with us at, at avengergroup.com, um, you'll be able to have access to the sourcing calendar. And within the sourcing calendar, you'll, you'll see all of the initiatives um, that we have in place through uh, for this year and, and some in 2023 as well. You'll be able to get a, a broad view of what are some of the areas that we'll be sourcing for diverse suppliers. Um, we do also accept um, suppliers who are not diverse to register in our portal. As mentioned earlier, you would go to avengergroup.com and from there, you'll be able to click on the prospective uh, supplier form and then also view the, the sourcing calendar. There is a link directly on that website as well. So I wanted to display what some of our regional sourcing opportunities are that we have available in the Maryland, Virginia and DC area. Um, categories of uh, fall in engineering and food and beverage. So we have region of seafood, regional produce, um, regional uh, pool and lifeguard. So these are some of the opportunities that we currently have in place for 2022, which again, you'll be able to see directly when clicking on the sourcing calendar. And some of the diverse suppliers that we currently contract with in the state of Maryland are in the our minority owned business enterprises and women owned business enterprises. Um, I've listed those out here on this slide um, for your reference and in case you know any of them or have heard of them. These diverse suppliers are contracted with Aramark and, and Avendra and they're actually servicing our Marriott um, partner. Next slide, please. All right, and I'll turn it back over to Casey um, to wrap up the, the remaining slides. Thank you. Let me just hop back on camera. Hi, everyone. Um, so just to kind of wrap up uh, some big, bold tips around how to just pursue business with a corporation like Marriott. The, the first thing is to learn about our business um, and the brands and the corporate initiatives. Um, anytime you're pursuing business with a large enterprise or really anyone, it's important to know your audience. Um, the three of us will often go to expos and, and see entrepreneurs go from booth to booth to booth and give the same pitch to vastly different companies. Um, it's very important that you tailor um, your, your business model, your pitch, uh, your differentiators to the companies that you're pursuing. Um, there are very, very few companies that can service all Fortune 500 companies effectively. So make sure you're narrowing your list and, and uh, cultivating your business development strategy around companies that uh, would be of value to you and that you would be of value to them. 
um, incorporate sustainable practices into your business. I mentioned our Cert360 goals. I know Aramark and Aventura have sustainability efforts that they partner with us on and that they have their own corporate guidelines around as well. Most Fortune 500 large corporations are getting very bold and ambitious in sustainability. And so if you have not given thought to how to be of service um, to help companies meet their sustainability objectives, you're going to be less competitive in an RFP than a company that has. Um, this is also a really great opportunity. I mentioned that incumbency bias. Well, sustainability is requiring lots of companies to rethink who they're being, doing business with and how they're doing business. And so that creates, that change creates an opportunity for you to enter. Um, and so make sure you're thinking about sustainability. Do register in, in both of our portals, um, particular, definitely register in ours. And if you are in a category that a venture manages, you should register in theirs as well. Um, because that's how you get, become visible to the folks who are ultimately going to be making decisions. And then uh, echoing kind of Mercedes' last point on the sourcing calendar, um, you could have the best product and service for Marriott and Avendra today. But if we're not ready to source for it, if it's not in cycle, if you will, um, there's not much that can be done. There's a, a lot of moving parts that happen in a corporation like ours. And so um, you, you definitely want to have the, the best product and service for us. That would be absolutely amazing. But if we're not ready to purchase, um, then you just have to be patient and wait for the opportunity. So the sourcing calendar, particularly on the Avendra on property side, um, is an incredible resource to try and plan your, your business development strategy um, to, to be ready for that opportunity when it comes. But know that it needs, we also need to be ready. And then here's our website as well, um, Marriott.com. There's a lot of stuff under diversity and inclusion um, strategy there, but there's a lot of great information on our company too. Um, and you can also book a hotel room on Marriott.com. I don't know if you've, if you've heard of that. Um, please start traveling again if you feel safe and comfortable. Um, but with that, I am going to um, stop sharing my screen. And I think the three of us are going to take any questions that may have come from the chat. And I'm going to invite some from the chamber to come back on and help us uh, moderate that portion of the conversation. Thank you. So we have a couple questions in the chat um, and, and for folks uh, watching, if you have any additional questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, but the first question is, does your team source for the entire U.S. operations? So uh, yes and no um, is, is the complicated answer. I mentioned before that um, Marriott has this owner franchise managed uh, structure. So yeah, our team collaborates with folks who oversee the purchasing of all U.S. managed spent spend, um, but we have multiple procurement sectors as well that we partner with. So IT procurement is its own division and organization, and they do all of the IT procurement. Global design is its own division. A vendor does most of the on-property stuff for U.S., Canada, and uh, they call it Carmeca. Uh, we call it Cala, but it's the Caribbean and Latin America and kind of those uh, surrounding countries and regions. Uh, and territory. So, so yes, for the corporate spend, for the uh, managed portfolio spend, um, absolutely, our team uh, collaborates and influences and, and uh, works towards uh, that uh, those processes. And then Avendra also does service a number of our franchise uh, properties in that region as well. And Natalie Mercedes, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just add uh, specific to Marriott, uh, we source for the U.S. and their locations outside of the U.S., as Casey noted, um, and, and, and the same for Aramark businesses as, as well. Um, we, are, we do service from a procurement and supply chain perspective globally. So again, including all of the U.S. and then markets outside the U.S. Thank you for, uh, there was a follow-up question for temporary staffing services. How do you engage with Marriott and Aramark? Yeah, so for Marriott, we have two separate staffing programs. Um, one is uh, very IT focused uh, and to be considered for those opportunities, you would certainly want to uh, register in our portal. Um, IT staffing is certainly very technical and so, um, takes a special kind of company to cultivate that talent and make it available for, for placements. Um, so definitely register on our portal. 
Uh, we also run a program, uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, provides on-property support for staffing, uh, hospitality, uh, like housekeepers and banquet staff. Uh, that is also through our portal. And then Avendra, um, Mercedes or Natalie, if you want to speak to the third shift or night shift cleaning and some of the, the kind of ways you manage there. Yeah, so for specific categories, so to Casey's point, specific to cleaning services, facilities, um, a vendor would support um, the, the staffing around those areas. So we also do have a registration portal, uh, Mercedes, I don't know if you, you, she did include it in, in the presentation. So you can register through that registration portal, uh, provide your initial information, um, and then uh, based on the needs of Marriott specific to those categories, we would make those matches and follow up with you. Yeah, and on the IT side, I don't know if that's where the, the questioner is from, but we periodically review the mix of suppliers in that program. Um, it's done on a rolling basis based on, on needs. Um, as you can imagine, there's been a, a good amount of fluctuation in the amount of uh, support we've, we've hired in that space over the past few years as the business climate has adjusted. And so um, as the business returns and our, our IT needs expand, uh, we may ultimately need more suppliers than we currently have in that program. And that's done on a rolling basis, not necessarily a RFP event uh, that you uh, may see on an event resourcing calendar. So it's important to be in the portal so you can be considered. Uh, and then to, to mention the specific um, specialties that you have in that space, what differentiates you from the you know hundreds of other companies that, that do very similar things. Why are you better and what are you strongest at in that space? Um, and then the only other insight I can offer is that our teams for both of those programs leverage um, vendor management software, uh, that, so Fieldglass and then also Pepin are two big names in the space and we leverage some of their tools. And so your familiarity and experience working in those um, platforms or with those tools uh, will help you know create some credibility and validity behind uh, your bid. Great, so the next question is, um, does Marriott recognize certifiers of women-owned businesses other than WBENC? The SBA recognizes the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce as a third-party certifier. SBA now manages women-owned small business certifications. We we do. Uh, I will say WBENC, WeBank, is our uh, most preferred certifying partner for a number of reasons, but um, the SBA certification, the any state, federal, local certifications, or other third-party NGOs um, are certainly welcome. The reason that we prefer um, what I, I like to call it the big five, uh, NFCC, WeBank, NGLCC, Disability Inn, um, and actually Novobed and PDC are, are kind of competing for that veteran space, and that was a lot of acronyms. I'm happy to, to Actually, they're on Mercedes slide for the most part. Um, so when you get these after, you'll be able to use them. But the reason we prefer them um, is because they include a site visit. Um, and so not only are the papers being reviewed to, to ascertain ownership, but someone is actually interviewing the owner to make sure that what's happening on paper, what's presented on paper kind of matches up with what's going on in real life. And in the supplier diversity ecosystem, um, as we report out on our progress to customers or ranking groups like Diversity Inc. or uh, the spend that is considered highest quality or, or most shareable are ones that are from one of those agencies. And so if you're just starting your journey, um, one of those other certifications uh, is, is possibly like a great start. Um, but if you're looking to connect in or, or provide more value, um, the the certifications from the uh, those groups are the highest preferred in corporate America for the most part and also connect you into a number of really great development uh, programs, workshops, content, um, and just a really strong network as well to do this kind of networking with other corporations beyond the ones just in your region. Okay, and then um, the next question is, do you, do you use MSP for IT staffing? If yes, who is the MSP? The managed service provider for the IT staffing program is tapped in today, um, but our team um, at Marriott HQ actually plays a, a very hands-on role in selecting the vendors that are going to be in that program. And so they're technically our MSP and they do a lot of work to deliver that, but I would say as you pursue our business, um, it's, I would, I would 
tapped in is the, the MFP, but uh, connecting with and getting visibility to the Marriott um, folks who are going to making those decisions is probably more important than how you might inter uh, interact or pursue business with uh, another company who's using Tapin as their MSP. Next question is, if a staffing company is chosen as a supplier, is there a set period they are utilized? And if so, for how long? Typically our contracts run three years, um, although there's mutation there. Um, Typically when a, a staffing company is contracted and onboarded to either of our programs, um, they then need to, to then go pursue the business. We have, uh, I mentioned 8,000 hotels around the world. Um, each of those are their own business and are sometimes evaluating multiple vendors contracted or approved to service the, the same property. And so there's no guarantees per se in those staffing contracts of, of X number of placements. Um, they get the opportunity to, to bid on those or pursue that business, but typically the contract terms are three years uh, across the board at Merit, regardless of whether it's staffing or otherwise, and then obviously renewals and things happen, um, but the, there's no necessarily guarantee in the program of a, a certain amount of volume. Yeah, and, and I would um, echo the same process on the facility side um, of staffing that, that a vendor manages, so typically two to three years. Uh, we have um, national contracts and some regional based contracts. Uh, so as we um, execute those agreements, there's set terms and uh, being an authorized supplier would enable the, the staffing company to, to bid and work with a variety of Marriott businesses. Um, but there's no guarantee that they would get the business. It just allows them to go after the business um, and the different Marriott accounts. And then this was a follow-up question. Where are you in the cycle of the staffing contract? So as I mentioned on the uh, on our side, that mostly done on a rolling basis. There's obviously a labor crunch uh, in the U.S. And so I, I know on the hospitality and equipment housekeeper side, um, we're, we're constantly looking for folks who have um, talent that they can deploy to our hotels. Um, on the IT side, I believe right now we're, we're at a little bit of a status quo where we feel that the mix of suppliers that we have on onboarded into the program is fulfilling our needs, um, but, but businesses is, is rebounding as um, the, the variants kind of wane at this particular moment. And so that allows us to, to perhaps you know, consider having more folks in our IT program and that could subsequently result in additional players being considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I, again, I would just add um, for the Avenger side, um, in the earlier slides, um, Mercedes did list the opportunities that we're actively recruiting for right now. Um, so it does not include um, staffing facilities, environmental at this point, but um, it is a category that we're continuously reviewing. So if opportunities do come up, uh, we would then you know, work with, again, organizations like this chamber and others to identify uh, where there may be suppliers that would be a, a, a good fit. But actively in the immediate future, um, uh, the staffing facilities um, isn't one of the active RFPs at this time, but it could be um, maybe towards the end of the year. And again, there's also a link uh, in the presentation where you can go in and review all of the active opportunities um, throughout the year um, for Avendra that do align with uh, Marriott needs. And that sourcing calendar um, is updated almost quarterly. And so if you don't see it on there today, um, check back in, in three to six months just to see kind of what new opportunities may have popped up on there. Um, and I will, I'll caveat for them, though that calendar is in pencil, not pen. And so as business needs change, sometimes things will be pushed back or rushed up. Um, so it's important that you're in the portal so that you're considered when it comes, but it's, it's also helpful to check in. That way you could be planning accordingly to pursue that business when it's when it's right. And Casey, just to chime in on that, uh, the sourcing calendar, the, the link that we're providing today, that sourcing calendar is updated uh, through, uh, let's say, I believe it was just a few weeks ago. So you'll see opportunities on there through 2023. And then we will strive to update that on a quarterly basis, as Casey mentioned. All right, so I don't have any more questions in the chat box, so I'm going to turn it over to Gigi, unless our panelists had any uh, closing thoughts. 
Alexis, I did see a hand raise, and I don't know if that's a person that wasn't able to put their question in the chat or if we're able to follow them. Um, but if uh, there were questions that we weren't able to answer, please feel free to, to shoot a note to suppliersdiversity at myriad.com, and we'll get you the, the information that you're looking for. Otherwise, I just want to thank uh, my good friends from Aramark Avenger Group for partnering with me on, on this outreach program today. Um, your partnership in this space is just so incredibly uh, appreciated. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful every day to, to have you to uh, work in alongside me in this effort. And then to the, the chamber, thank you for having us. Um, it's so great to be able to talk about this work uh, and to, to invite your members to to come work with us, to partner with us. Um, so hopefully, you know, in a, uh, corporate contracting takes a long time. So hopefully in 18 to 24 months, we can come back with some success stories of folks who are contracted, onboarded, and perhaps, you know, servicing some of our properties or our agents. Well, we want to thank you for that, and uh, we absolutely want our members uh, to reach out, and that's why we did this program today. We know that uh, uh, your great partners, uh, Vendra, uh, the Aramark uh, Avendra team, uh, and so well represented by Mercedes and Natalie today, really very helpful information. You answered a lot of questions, and even for those people that are not in staffing, because I know there were a lot of questions about that, uh, you know, I get inquiries about, you know, how do they buy local beers <laughs> from breweries, you know, those kinds of questions. And uh, I'd love a green light from you that I can send people uh, to your portal or even to your email if they're chamber members that, you know, are seeking guidance on who do they need to know. Because to Casey's point, you know, it's it's not only do you need to apply and, and be, um, you know, certified, but it, it helps to develop relationships. You know, it's a human environment as always. So, uh, you know, I think that that was very solid advice and, and very consistent with what we uh, stress also with our members. So I want to thank you for, for saying that. You may be getting some calls and emails from my uh, chamber members as follow-up, and I hope that's okay with you. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. The, the email for sure, the phone call is a little packed, and so I have very rarely been able to answer a call in the middle of the day. Uh, but do really try hard to, to we have a whole team who, who supports that so far oversee inbox. And so get folks the information out the door. Uh, we do have a beverage team that uh, works to uh, manage our beverage programs for the various brands. Um, the most important tip that I can give you on that front is just the distribute. Uh, we're not actually legally allowed to buy directly from anyone in that space. We have to buy via distributor. So once you, particularly for the local beers, um, once you get into our distributors, the, the properties have space in their beverage program to localize their offering. So like in Michigan, for example, you need to have bells on your menu, even though we don't necessarily have that as a brand standard. You can't have a, a Michigan bar without Bell's Brewery uh, listed. And so there are definitely opportunities to do that locally. Um, and I keep asking to get invited to one of the tastings so I can help weigh in on <laughs> some of the beer selection throughout the company. So. Um, that is just another great example of a, a potential path into the to working with us. Fantastic. Well, of course, that's, that's what we're thinking about on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> anyway, well, very seasonally apropos. But uh, let me just say, we can't tell you how much we appreciate this. You've been great to work with uh, in the run-up to this. I, I hope this uh, certainly piqued the interest of our members and they see opportunity out there. Uh, we also, you know, our chamber also has a foundation where we have a, uh, our Veteran Institute for Procurement and in fact uh, have um, an online directory for those companies that are, and they're certified uh, veteran-owned businesses. So we should probably have a follow-up conversation about that at another time because uh, we have tremendous diversity among our veteran-owned uh, small businesses, um, particularly service-disabled veterans. So to be continued on that uh, when, we, when we speak again. Uh, but I'd like to wrap up. Um, I know we're at time. You've been very generous with your time. So I want everybody to join me, please, in thanking Casey and Mercedes and Natalie for sharing best strategies on how to do business with Marriott. Uh, I want to thank our members. Uh, thank you for participating today. Your time is valuable, and we hope you found this presentation to be of value. Uh, we're interested in your success. In fact, we're invested in your success. So please never hesitate to call the chamber. It's a good day when we hear from you and we're here, our entire team is here to take your calls, your emails and help you connect uh, to the right opportunities. And so with that, we hope to see you all again at our next Accelerator and at our upcoming events. So thank you again and see you all soon. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Thank you. Take care.